Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're back in War Thunder, and it's time to look at a new vehicle. With the Chronicle events reaching six challenges completed, that means we get access to the first set of vehicles. That includes the Tandem Mai, and of course the uh, T-18, which hopefully I'll be talking about very soon for you. Unfortunately, I'm quite busy right now, so we'll see where we get to. But there's the T-18, as you can see there. But anyway, let's get back to the... Uh, actual thoughts of the video. The Tandem Mai is a rank 1 battle rating 2.0 aircraft and it follows along in the footsteps of many other rank 1 Russian aircraft. We have the TB3M, the I-301, the I-29, the MBR-2M and I think that's about it. Uh, there is also the Lag-334 but well I don't have that thing and I'm pretty sure it's rank 2 but it might be rank uh, 1, I'm not sure about that one. But it is at 2.0, meaning that it's in the middle of all of these other gift aircraft, giving its own BR, which is nice. And on top of that, it does have a decent amount of armament, and as you can see, quite a lot of wing spars. <laughs> this thing ends up with four 7.62mm chicasses uh, built into the uh, wings of this aircraft. You could just see them. Around about here, as you can see, 600 rounds per gun, giving you 2,400, which is nothing to scoff at, meaning that you can stay in the air for a hell of a long time. And then you've got Piddler back here in the gunner's seat with also a 7.62 chicasse. You do get a first-person view on this turret, which is lovely, and also you get a nice cockpit view as well, which is nice. Uh, the Tandem Mai has self-sealing fuel tanks with a neutral gas pressurization system. Now, I'm not exactly how this will work in-game, but so far it hasn't worked for me, at least in the slightest. Basically what's happened is the tanks haven't self-sealed uh, and also I've just burned to death the majority of the times I'm set on fire. It does have an oil cooling system uh, here and also here. And of course the engine, it's a Tomansky M87 14-cylinder radial and 830 horsepower at max power. That's pretty much what you get out of this machine. If we look at the armor profile, you just have the seat itself, uh, which is around about 8.5 millimeters. It's actually not the seat, it's the little bit behind it. Nothing special though. If we look at the camouflages, the Tandem Mai doesn't get one, so hopefully in a future, uh, <laughs> future event, we'll get a nice camouflage for it. That seems to be the trend that Gajin likes going for, but the initial skin is uh, very simple, but it is very USSR, which is what I like to see. Uh, the actual coverage of the turret at the back is pretty good, uh, being a ball turret, obviously you still have issues from below it. You have these piddly little um, gears here, which do like to flop off quite a lot, uh, but overall, the machine is actually quite interesting to fly, but we'll get into that in the gameplay section. Modifications, of course, being a gift vehicle, that means that it's all unlocked for you. You don't have to worry about unlocking anything, and it also gets access to two 50 kilogram bombs and two 100s. So this is obviously going to be uh, a little bit more useful in a uh, ground forces setting, and what you may actually find interesting with this is it actually has an internal bomb bay. So the internal bomb bay is right here, uh, very similar to the uh, Yak-9, which is like this. Let's try and find it. I think it's the Yak-9B uh, in the tree. If you look at the Yak-9B, it has bombs sat near uh, the pilot, and it has this little bomb bay here. To me, the Tandem Mai seems to be a very similar system in that sense, where it's just behind the pilot, uh, it's just a little bit lower, and you can't see the bombs on the top, unfortunately. If we talk about ammunition uh, to take on this thing, because since it is an attacker, unless you're running it in ground forces, I would just say don't take the bombs. 200 kilos is not going to sway an aerialistic bat, uh, match uh, most of the time, and it's quite an encumbrance uh, with uh, you losing speed on a vehicle which uh, desperately needs it. So we'll get rid of that. I take Universal on the turret, uh, the 7.62, because it's APIT, 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 AI. And at this level, 9mm of penetration is enough to annihilate anything you come across. The 7.62 Chicasse is one of the best guns at rank 1 because of its high fire rate, its high ammo count, and on top of that, the fact it has access to API rounds. The tracers are no different for the offensive 7.62, the API and the APIT. The default round uh, you stay away from 
Universal, as you can see, is very similar to the Tracer round, and the Stealth round is also incredibly good. Take your pick out of Universal, Tracer, and Stealth. I personally like Tracer because I like how it looks, especially when I'm trying to be accurate with the machine. But overall, the guns are great, but the flight performance is a little bit iffy on it. Uh, if we're talking about lineups, uh, something I like to talk about, especially when we have ground realistic in mind, is lineups around aircraft. So first of all, if we look at 2.0 uh, for the army, we don't really have any. We have the T-70, and that's really about it. So you'd have to build a lineup around a T-70, and you don't want to do that, especially when the USSR is spoiled for options at 2.3. So it's much better to run the T-28, the uh, ZIS-30, or the SU-76M, whichever you feel like, or the T-80 if you really want to uh, start slinging the noose. Uh, but, if you don't want to do that, you can take the 72k gas if you feel like it. So there's a lot of options at 2.3, which is lovely. When we look at the aircraft, at 2.3, you're also spoiled for options. So the AX-7B, the MiG-315BK, LAG 335, IL-2-1941, uh, the I-16 Type 24, and also the AK-1, the AK-2, the AK-4, but at least you can't, at the end of the day, take the I-29 or the I-301. So at least there's something like that going for the tandem Mai. Also the AR-2 you can take, the Leg 311. As you can see, there's just a lot of aircraft around this BR, uh, which the USSR can take into ground forces. But if you really want to take the tandem Mai, or the Ma, however you want to say it, you can, uh, with a solid 2.3 lineup. Are there better options in this thing at 2.3? Yes. Uh, the IL-2, I'd basically take any of these over the tandem Mai right now. I would also take the Yak-4 and the Yak-2 because you're already running a fighter. Uh, the I-16 is a good bit of fun. The AR-2 as well for a decent bomb load in ground realistic, so yeah. Well, do you take this thing in ground realistic? No, uh, not, not in my opinion. Do you take it in air realistic? Well, that's the question we're going to answer. Let's get into the gameplay part. When we look at other Soviet vehicles that have been gift vehicles at rank 1, it's definitely been a mixed bag. The TB3M, the I-29, and the I-301, all on release, I would say, were pretty overpowered. The I-301 has been balanced by its BR, even though it's still really good. The I-29 has had a few flight model tweaks, so it can't outturn Spitfires, and the TB3M, well, it seems everybody's forgotten about it, but it's still a monster at 1.3. But we also have the MBR2. The MBR2 was one of these planes added to the game, which never really felt overpowered. It felt like it fit the mold that I like of a gift vehicle, something that's interesting, something that's different, but something that's not going to break the game, just like the other three I just mentioned. So the MBR2 gets a special place in my heart because of this, because it is what I see as a perfect gift vehicle. One which can be taken out with a few friends for a few laughs. One which is special to the individual because it is rare and it is different to every other aircraft in the tree. And the Tandem Mai fits this mold as well. So for me, the Tandem Mai is a wonderful gift premium. It's something different when you look at the tail design, the fact that there's a gunner sat on the back, the squidged fact of the design, it was a prototype, it's all of these wonderful things and it is different to the standard 2.0s that you get in the Soviet tree in the form of the Lag 38, uh, the Yak series, all of these follow a very specific mold and then you've got the bastardization of Soviet aircraft in the corner over there staring at you going please fly me I have a damn tail gunner and the tandem my to me is that it is not an aircraft which is ever going to win style points for being beautiful it is not an aircraft that you're ever going to consider taking out over the competition that you have at 2-0 but what it is is something special and it seems like Gaijin have realized this too because well first of all it has an attacker spawn and now you may thinking, oh god, P-47 time again. But the issue with the Tandem Mai is that it can't climb at all. The stat card flat out lies about this aircraft. 
this thing struggles to climb on the small maps that we see to the point where chasing down bombers from an attacker's spawn in the tandem mine is impossible to do and even keeping at the same level as the enemy fighters coming in is very hard to do as well. It is an aircraft that is heavy and handles like a boat because for some reason they just decided there is no point in putting a good engine on this thing, at least compared to its weight. So what are its good sides? Well, it does get an air spawn, so you are at least going to have some altitude behind you. The firepower behind it for 7.62 Shikasses is nothing to laugh at, especially with the ammunition it has, uh, which is a hell of a lot in this. You, from that point of view, you can carry games, and on top of this, you can pretty much web uh, infinitely, and if your engine starts overheating, all you have to do is knock it down to 100, and it stops overheating. So it's very easy to control the engine itself. So what are the bad sides? Everything else about it. It is over cumbersome, it feels horrible to fly, the elevator is probably the most uh, versatile and manu well, maneuverable part of the aircraft uh, compared to its roll rate and its rudder. Its rudder is useless, its roll rate is hideous for a rank 1 plane, especially if you're used to stuff like I-153s, I-16s, even lags or uh, yaks. The closest I can give it is that it's like a lag, but even then we're pushing uh, barriers here. The, <laughs> the tandem Mai is really not an aircraft which is maneuverable and at the same time because of its weed whacker engine what happens is once you make a maneuver goodbye to all of your speed. So let's say people are just playing the meta vehicles of rank 1, the HU-100, the early BF-109s, the Hurricanes, uh, let's talk about the Buffalo the, uh, I can't remember what it's called, the F-3F, I believe, uh, the biplane American, uh, American vehicle with really good, um, with a really good engine on it. Let's talk about all those vehicles. They are amazing vehicles, they are meta vehicles, these are the ones you're generally going to see. What I also saw a lot of, those absolutely stomped my ass, by the way. The only way I could kill any of them was either by surprising them at the start of the match, by uh, climbing over them and then taking them out or them screwing up and getting stuck on my tail and getting annihilated but you know the one of the issues I had one of the biggest issues I had while flying this thing the key 27 and the reason for this is because I lost so much damn speed on a turn when I would dive for someone and then turn off to go like a, a separate direction a key, a key 27 would be able to catch me and outmaneuver me, and basically all I had was the tail gunner to try and keep myself alive. That is how horrible this aircraft's performance is, and I don't want them to change it. I know a lot of people are probably going to be annoyed at the fact that this thing is not very good, or they're going to be calling for its BR to be lowered, but for me, this is a perfect gift vehicle. It's something different, it's not something that's going to break the game, and uh, overall, it is a rare design, which is what all collectors want. If you want stuff that's overpowered, just wait for them to release new uh, vehicles in the form of premiums. See what the community says. If the community says it's overpowered, pick them up. But for the events like this, these events are made by stuff like the Tandem Mai, and I'm so happy that we've got a vehicle. Uh, like that in it. Will I be flying it a lot? No. I'm a rank 5 in the USSR tree. If I was lower ranks, would I fly it? No. I would fly my other premiums. But the main thing is, with this thing, is when I'm on a nice with some mates and we say, hey, let's go piss about, I know where I'm going, and it's straight for the tandem mine. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.